Today I'm going to walk you through how to create thumbnails in Canva. This is how I create my thumbnails. I have a specific style that I use, but you can create any sort of thumbnail in Canva. It is amazing. They already have the dimensions you need set up. So it's literally you just click a button and then they also have all sorts of templates that you can see on the side. So you can create thumbnails based on their templates. If you want a specific style, they have a lot of done for you ones. I always create mine from scratch, but I think this is one of the best places you can actually create thumbnails. There is a free version of Canva, so if you're not already signed up, definitely click the link below and sign up for it. I do have the pro version because I create digital products as well as thumbnails in Canva, but there is so much you can do with the free version of Canva, and I highly recommend it to any YouTuber that needs to create thumbnails, especially if you want to create good looking thumbnails that are click worthy and do it in a very quick method. So today, I'm going to do a thumbnail for this channel for one of my last videos and just walk you through my process. Like I said, if you're super new, I would just start with a template and make changes from there. Personally, I've found that I have a style that I like for my channel, so that's what I'm going to show you. And that style includes a background of one particular color that I've decided is kind of my brand color for this brand that I'm doing here. And it is a color that Literally, I just picked because I liked it. There is no psychology behind making people click, but there are colors that people are more likely to click. So you can look into that or honestly just pick one that you like because you're going to be doing this a lot. And I love this color. And today I'm going to be doing a thumbnail for a paper flower tutorial that I am posting on this channel. I have a lot of paper flower tutorials because I used to make and sell paper flowers. This next feature is a pro feature, but I am going to show you how I use screenshots for my videos to put in my thumbnails. This is just a screenshot from the video and I'm going to click on effects and go to the top one, which is background remover, and then use the background remover on this thumbnail. As you can see, it is really, really effective and very quick. If you're using the free version of Canva and you can't upgrade because you don't want to spend the money, you can use the website removebg.com. So there will be extra steps but you can get the same effect doing that. I personally think that Canva is way worth what they have in the pro version and that's why I use it. And this is probably one of the effects that I use the most often. I use it all the time when I am creating thumbnails for this channel and my other channels. I do have multiple channels now as I am trying to grow my YouTube ad revenue. And I love this feature because as you can see, it's very effective. They've done a great job. It's so quick and it is just really well done. If you're doing a thumbnail with your face on it, I would highly recommend that you remove the background from the photo of yourself just to give it a more punchy look. And it's really great to get rid of the distracting background elements that you might have in your photo or screenshot from your video. Next, I'm gonna play around with adding text to my thumbnail. And there are a lot of options in the text when you're adding it to just put in a already pre-done type design where they have figured out colors and text that goes well together for you. So you can use one of those. They are usually really catchy with like the eye catching elements. So those are great if you want to do that. Of course, like I said, I have my own style that I've developed over doing a few different thumbnails. So I'm going to just click add a heading and then make the text my own and make it match my style. Canva is great because you can drag around the heading and they will put up these guidelines that you see. I love these guidelines, the little purple lines that show because they give you a good idea of where to keep your text within so that it shows wherever you are seeing the thumbnail. If you go outside of that text, it's going to cut off in certain elements. Following those guidelines is just a really easy way for me to make sure that my thumbnail is going to look good no matter where it's shown and that it's always, you're always seeing the text and all the elements I wanna include. So the first word I'm including in my thumbnail is easy because that is something that people love to click on. So I'm just gonna make easy really big and put it at the top. So that is one of the first things you see next to the flower, which is the item that they will be making. Remember when you are designing your thumbnails, you are designing them mainly for mobile. So you're gonna wanna make sure that these look good when they are really, really small. So you'll be looking at it on a pretty big screen when you're designing. But remember that it's gonna be shrunk down very, very small when people are on their phones and other mobile devices. So you're gonna want the text to be very large and legible. I see way too many thumbnails that have 
such tiny, tiny text. I have no idea what they're actually saying. And those are just not as clickable as something with big, big letters or numbers that catch your eye and you can actually read on your phone. To add more lines of text, you will just copy and paste that text box or you can go back to add a heading. I always like to make sure that each line of text is individual, so I will never put multiple lines of text in the same box. Just because you want to be able to manipulate and move around each line individually and make the size what you want. So as you can see here, I'm going to have them at different levels of size and it's easiest to do that when they aren't all in the same box. For my style of thumbnail, most of what I'm doing is playing around with the size and location of the text so that it is pleasing to the eye but also very eye-catching and legible and as I said before, the text is big enough that people on mobile can read it. Another thing that I do personally is I just never have more than five words max. I try to keep it to four or even less, even just one or two words is highly, highly recommended. It's so much better than having a huge amount of text on the thumbnail. So text thumbnails, which mine are mostly text heavy, but even text heavy, I try to keep it very minimal. Hopefully that makes sense, but mainly I just want the keywords so they get it in very quick amount of time. And as you can see on my last line, I put the word tutorial. So easy and tutorial and then what it's about in the middle. Those are the key aspects for my thumbnail. As you can see, when you hover over a word, you can see the little box that pops up and then you can drag and expand it. So it fills up the space that you have. And then you can always, of course, click and move things up or down or kind of adjust them. I do this by eye. I don't really follow any guidelines other than the, like I said, the purple box that it keeps popping up that you can see the guidelines in Canva itself. Because I know anything too far outside of that is going to get cut off, especially when you are looking on a video after it finishes and your video thumbnail pops up, you will want everything to show so that yours is the most clickable. And if you go too far outside of that line, it's going to cut off and people probably won't get the whole effect of your thumbnail. So once I was finished with the text and happy with how it looked, I kind of just made all of that done. And then I decided to move over to my flower and kind of adjust that a little bit so it filled up the space better. All you do with thumbnails is play around until you're happy and then that is pretty much it. As you can see, it's very easy to adjust the direction of things. There is little pop-ups that kind of guide you through everything and it makes it super, super easy, which is why I love Canva. I literally made this one in like five minutes and that's how long most of my thumbnails take. After you're done, you're gonna go up to the top where it says download and then click PNG and download your file. Canva takes a couple seconds to prepare and download your file and then after it's done it will download and it will be named whatever your design was named or whatever the text said first. So on this one for example it says add a heading. You're going to want to change that to match your video and maybe throw in some of the keywords that match your video. So it says something like easy paper flower tutorial for example on this one and you're going to want to do that because you want to give YouTube as much information as possible about your videos. So using your keywords in your thumbnail name definitely cannot hurt you. So I highly rec recommend that you change it to whatever matches your video versus whatever Canva automatically named it. If you need help with keywords and figuring out which keywords are best, I use TubeBuddy as a resource for researching my keywords. So I will link that down in the description box below. And the final step, of course, is to just pull up the video that you've been working on and put the new thumbnail into the video. After you save it, everything will be good and you are ready to go with your new thumbnail. So I will hop over to my channel page and show you what this thumbnail looks like. This whole process took less than 10 minutes from start to finish. And as you can see in my videos, when you look at my channel, it fits with the other videos. So there's cohesive branding, which I think looks great. And I will also allow people to recognize my videos in the search results.